Hi everyone, this lesson is on the side effects of benzodiazepines. So we're going to talk about the common side effects of benzodiazepine use. We're also going to talk about some important long-term consequences of using benzodiazepines. And we're also going to talk about some side effects that can occur when we stop benzodiazepines. Before we talk about the side effects, let's talk about some examples of benzodiazepines and how they work. So some examples of benzodiazepines include diazepam, lorazepam, alprazolam, and midazolam. These are going to be medications often used to reduce symptoms of anxiety. So they're going to be used to treat short-term anxiety. So anxiety in conditions like panic attacks and specific phobias. So they're often going to be used only for short-term anxiety and will not be used for long-term anxiety. They're also going to be used to treat seizure disorders as well. Now, benzodiazepines are GABA-A receptor modulators, and GABA-A receptor is going to be the receptor for GABA, and GABA is going to be the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, so in the brain. So what benzodiazepines do is that they promote the activation of these GABA receptors to ultimately reduce neuronal activity even more. So they act on, again, GABA-A receptors. So they ultimately lead to an improved effect from GABA neurotransmitter binding to GABA-A receptors. And how they do this is that they actually lead to increased frequency of opening of chloride ion channels in neurons. And by doing this, they're going to lead to a generalized reduction in neuronal activity. And due to their ability to reduce neuronal activity, they're going to cause a variety of mild and or severe side effects. Often they're going to be sedative side effects, which we're going to talk about in the upcoming slides. So let's talk about the common side effects of benzodiazepine use. The first one we're going to talk about is somnolence. So somnolence is going to be excessive drowsiness, tiredness, and fatigue. And some patients can have what we describe as hangover fatigue. So this is going to be where patients have taken benzodiazepines one day, and then the next day they can feel more fatigued and tired out. That's going to be what is described as hangover fatigue. And this is going to occur, this somnolence is going to occur in at least 1% of patients. It's not going to be a very, very common side effect, but it can occur more commonly than others. And again, this is going to be due to the sedative effects of benzodiazepines. So again, it's mostly going to be due to the benzodiazepine medication's ability to suppress the neuronal functioning or neuronal activity. Another important side effect is going to be dizziness. So feeling lightheaded is going to be something that can be described with benzodiazepine use. And again, this is going to be due to benzodiazepine-induced inhibition of central nervous system activity. And we can see vertigo in some cases. So the difference here is that in some cases, patients can feel lightheaded, so they may feel a bit lightheaded, but in other cases, they may have vertigo. Vertigo is where the room is spinning, so that can also occur in some cases. We can also see ataxia. Ataxia is going to be decreased motor or muscle coordination. They can often have a sort of loss of balance, and this is often going to be one of the most common side effects of benzodiazepine use. At least 3% of patients are described to have ataxia, at least when taking diazepam as an example. Headaches are also another side effect that can occur. So they can either be tension headaches where there's a sort of band-like pain around the head. So it can be bilateral on both sides, or it can be migraine headaches. And migraine headaches are going to be unilateral, so one-sided, and they can often be pounding headaches, and they can have associated nausea and some other aura-like symptoms that can occur. So again, especially the migraine headaches are going to be something that comes up with benzodiazepines. These have been shown to occur more frequently in patients taking benzodiazepines. We can also see sleep disturbances in benzodiazepine use. So benzodiazepines do disrupt rapid eye movement or REM sleep. So this may lead to possible issues with memory consolidation. So REM sleep is going to be the stage of sleep where patients are dreaming. So this is where they don't have muscle control. Their eyes move rapidly. And this is where the name comes from and they are dreaming. And this stage of sleep is going to be important in memory consolidation. So benzodiazepines are known to disrupt this stage of sleep. So we may see some issues with memory consolidation and it can lead to feelings of non-restful sleep. So the next day patients may feel tired out because of these sleep disturbances. You can also see hypotension occurring in benzodiazepine use. Hypotension is going to be a low blood pressure. More specifically, it can be a low blood pressure of less than 90 systolic, less than 60 diastolic. And this can lead to signs and symptoms of low blood pressure, including presyncope and syncope. Presyncope is going to be dizziness, so that can tie in with what we just talked about 
with dizziness being a side effect, so patients can feel lightheaded. In some more severe cases, they may have an episode of syncope, which is fainting, and this can often lead to a problem of orthostatic hypotension. This is where patients may sit up or stand up too quickly, they feel dizzy, and in some cases they may fall because of this. Other side effects of benzodiazepine use include nausea and vomiting. So an upset stomach may occur in rare cases. It's often going to be mild nausea. Vomiting may occur in some cases. And other patients may have bowel habit changes. So they may have intermittent issues with bowel habit changes. It can either be diarrhea. So diarrhea is going to be increased frequency and or decreased consistency of stool. So if we look at a Bristol stool chart, type 4 stool is going to be considered normal. And type 5, 6, and 7 are going to be considered diarrhea. So as the number increases, there's more liquid. You can think of it like that. So that is diarrhea. There may be constipation in other cases. Depending on the medication used, some benzodiazepines may have more constipation. Some may have diarrhea. And some patients can alternate between these two. And constipation is going to be where there's a decreased frequency of bowel movement and or increased consistency of stool. So that would be on the other end of the bristle stool chart, type 1, 2, and 3. We can also see diplopia occurring with some patients. This is where there's double vision. This is going to be a less common side effect. It's going to be more rare. And some patients can also describe blurred vision. So blurring of vision has been reported in some patients. And this will be especially problematic for older patients. And as we will see, this can be something that can occur with some more important complications of benzodiazepine use, which we'll talk about here in a moment. We can also see a potential side effect of respiratory depression. So respiratory depression is going to be where there's reduced or decreased respiratory firing within the medulla oblongata. This is going to be due to use with benzodiazepines in other central nervous system depressants. So if taking very high dose of benzodiazepine, which can especially occur in many patients because they become tolerant to whatever dose they're taking, and then they may require higher doses if the dose continues to escalate higher and higher, or they start taking other central nervous system depressants, they can be at a high risk for having respiratory depression. And some of these other central nervous system depressants can include opioids and barbiturates. So this is going to be a, a very significant side effect and can be potentially lethal in some cases, especially if there's a respiratory arrest. Mental disturbances have also been reported in benzodiazepine use. There are many different mental disturbances that have been reported. These include confusion, dysarthria, which means a sort of slurred speech, difficulty articulating. Slowed speech can also occur, hallucinations and depression. These have all been noted, and these mental disturbances are more likely to occur in older patients. This is partly due to reduced metabolism of benzodiazepines in older patients, and also due to some of their body composition. So because as patients get older, their ability to metabolize medications like benzodiazepines decreases, they're going to start to have more of these side effects, including these mental disturbances. So it's important to reduce dosing or completely eliminate the medication if possible. And we can often see these mental disturbances in higher doses or doses not tapered in accordance with reduced metabolism, as we just mentioned. So as patients get older, if they were taking a dose previously, they may have to reduce that dose. Or if they start taking other medications, it may worsen these mental disturbances if there's some interaction with benzodiazepine and the other medication, for instance. Other important side effects include urinary retention. So this is going to be it a decreased ability to initiate urination or a disrupted urine stream. And this is going to be due to benzodiazepine-induced muscle relaxation. So we talked about this briefly. Benzodiazepines lead to reduction in neuronal activity, and this can lead to issues with muscle functioning. So it can lead to muscle relaxation. And depending on the muscle that is relaxed more than others, this can lead to particular findings, including urinary retention. And one of those muscles is going to be the the trucer muscle. So the the trucer muscle is the muscle that surrounds the bladder, and that's the one that squeezes the bladder, allowing urination to occur. But if there's too much relaxation of the trucer muscle, we can have urinary retention. We may have issues with either starting urination or continuing urination. And on the opposite side, we can also have urinary incontinence. So this is, again, due to benzodiazepine-induced muscle relaxation. But this is where the muscle relaxation mostly affects the sphincter muscle. So if we're not able to constrict the sphincter muscle properly, we can have leaking of urine. This will be a sort of stress incontinence. So because we're not able to kind of hold the urine in the bladder, if there's any stress or pressure on the abdomen, for instance, if coughing or sneezing, that can lead to a leaking of urine. So that is going to be something that can be noted. So we can either have urinary retention where 
we're having too much relaxation on the detrusor muscle, or we can have urinary incontinence where we have too much relaxation on the sphincter muscle. And that leads us to some very, very important and severe complications and consequences of benzodiazepine use, especially in older patients. These include a fall risk. So older patients taking benzodiazepines are at an increased risk of falling. And this is especially going to be important because falling in older individuals has high morbidity and mortality. And the fall risk can be due to many of the side effects we've talked about before, either the mental disturbances, they may be confused, they may have hypotension from the medication, so their blood pressure may be low, they may feel dizzy, they may feel lightheaded, they may faint, they may have visual disturbances, so they may not see properly, and some other sedative effects, they may feel very tired out, and that can all lead to or increase the risk for falls. And when an elderly patient falls, they can have fall-related sequelae, which is just conditions caused by the fall. So a lot of patients can fall, break a hip, and that can lead to long-term hospital stays and even mortality in some cases. These are very, very important consequences of benzodiazepine use. And that's also another reason why it's important to taper dose in elderly patients or completely remove the medication. Cognitive impairment is also another important long-term consequence of benzodiazepine use. So there is evidence of increased risk of cognitive impairment in dementia with long-term use of benzodiazepines, especially if taken for greater than three years, and especially if taking a long half-life benzodiazepine. So benzodiazepines like Valium or Diazepam, that particular benzodiazepine has a very long half-life, 20 to 70 hours. So that is going to be a particular benzodiazepine that increases the risk, especially if taking for long periods of time, that's the one that's going to increase the risk for cognitive impairment, especially. And the cognitive impairment is going to be especially overt in elderly patients. And with the cognitive impairment and dementia, we can have anterior grade amnesia. So that's going to be difficulty forming new memories. Now let's discuss what happens when we stop the benzodiazepine medications, and especially if we stop them too quickly. So one of the important consequences of stopping benzodiazepines is rebound anxiety. So it's going to be considered rebound anxiety because we've been often using the benzodiazepines to reduce anxiety, but when we stop taking the benzodiazepines, we can have a sort of rebound anxiety, a flare-up of anxiety, and worsen anxiety, and it may be severe in some cases. Again, this is going to be something that occurs after discontinuing the medication, and this can be common. So patients get accustomed to taking the benzodiazepines to help relieve their anxiety. And due to changes in GABA receptor activity and some other neuronal changes, when they stop taking benzodiazepines, they can have a heightened anxiety. So this can be something that can occur when stopping benzodiazepine medications. And something else that can occur if we stop benzodiazepine medications too quickly is a discontinuation syndrome or a withdrawal syndrome. So again, this especially occurs if decreasing dose too quickly or stopping immediately. So this is especially going to be important with higher doses of benzodiazepines and longer durations. So if we've been taking high doses for long periods of time, it's important to taper the dose very slowly. So if patients who have been taking high doses for long periods of time just stop the medication abruptly, they can have very severe withdrawal symptoms. So some of these include very severe insomnia, anxiety, depression, headaches, blurred vision, confusion, and many other symptoms. So a lot of the side effects of benzodiazepine use we talked about before can occur with withdrawal even more severe. So that's why it's going to be very important to taper doses slowly. And let's talk at the end about severe side effects, and these are going to be very rare. These are going to be side effects that are reported very rarely, but it's something to also point out here. Some of these include neutropenia. Neutropenia is going to be low neutrophil count. So neutrophils are going to be white blood cells that are important in dealing with bacterial infections. We can see pancytopenia in some cases, so this is where we have low red blood cells, low platelets, and low white blood cells. We can also see in some cases liver disease, more specifically cholestatic liver injury, and we can also see jaundice occurring in some patients on benzodiazepines, and this is due to increased bilirubin or hyperbilirubinemia. And this is ultimately due to liver damage caused by the benzodiazepines if there's cholestatic liver injury. Please check out my lessons on metoprolol and amlodipine. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.